Okay, <clears throat> here's my new laser. I've got it set up to cut out a bracket. I don't know how well that pattern is going to show up in the video, but this is a pre preview of what the cut's going to be. And uh, I have an exhaust fan here, a filter that is pulling the air out because when this burns the metal, it stinks quite a bit. Okay, so this is two millimeter thick aluminum sheet and underneath there I have a piece of stainless basically to protect the area underneath where we're going to be cutting and I'll be looking through this uh, protective glass that I have here it's, a, it's going to filter out the frequency that the laser operates at so it's not good to look at this with uh, naked eyes and that but anyway this is going to make 50 passes and the laser is going to have to burrow down through the material so it's uh, going to take this cut about 15 minutes I won't film the whole thing but I'll show you how we're going to get started there's a foot switch over here that's designed to allow you to start the job so we're going to go ahead and hit this button and we're going to start lasering so the first thing it's going to do here is cut out a hole in the center and one thing you can tell when it is starting to cut is you will see the sparks flying out the bottom also but so far it hasn't pierced that metal you can see that it is only sparking on the top and another thing is you can see when you're cutting metal this thick the laser beam is too narrow of a focus and it's a really small pinpoint so what you have to do is tell it to wobble the laser so you can't quite see it here but it's actually going in little circles as it's moving around the line that it's cutting so in this particular shape is a circle but going around there it is cutting out or it is wobbling the laser in a manner that it's actually creating a wider path. Now, now you can see on the bottom piece, it's actually started to pierce through. But this isn't like a CNC machine that is touching the surface with a cutting tool, and it's a very precise uh, cut. This is more burning in a pattern where it's kind of imprecise in the actual mo molecules that it's removing from the aluminum you can tell when it's cutting when it's actually sparking more because that's actually atoms molecules that is burning off of it and there it's done so now it's cutting around there but it doesn't know it's done but I have this set up to run 50 passes so in this case it's a little inefficient it's going to go ahead and uh, um, continue to cut there now it's assured that it's done and it's moving on to the next piece it still boggles my mind that it's doing this with a beam of light uh, now this particular laser is about 60 watts my previous laser was 20 watts so this is quite a bit more powerful but um there's obviously more power and bigger ones that you buy, but this one being 60 watt, watts, it makes pretty easy work of this. These kind of lasers are typically used for just engraving. As you can see there, it is just starting to pierce that now. The other thing that's really cool about this is this is a drawing that I made in the CAD program just a little while ago. Now this laser is turning it into a finished bracket. Now, it's actually, I can barely see it, but Okay, it's down there. See, it's hard to tune it to give it enough time to reliably pierce 
the whole cut. If you back off on that so that it, it, it does less, then you, a lot of times you're left with a part that's stuck there. And you can't move this whole setup until it's all done. So it's better to let it go a few passes beyond where it is actually cut the material free. Still amazes me that this is being done with a laser beam. I have it set to do 50 passes and now it's going around the whole entire bracket. I won't film too much of this because this is going to be a lot longer travel path and it's going to take it a, probably another 10 minutes to cut this out. Still pretty amazing. I want to pause the video here and start it again when it gets toward the end of it. Okay, it's been about 10 more minutes and we're starting to get down to where we've pierced through most of this larger outer layer. And you can actually see that the part is lifting up. So it's just about almost done being cut. And most of the way around, it's not even cutting the main part anymore. And I may stop it before it cuts all the way through and I'll just wiggle that out by hand. So I can see by how much it's warped that yeah, we're pretty much cut most of the way free. So at least I paused it there in case I need to restart it. I'm going to take and that piece is pretty damn hot right now so I won't be touching that. But it's not a bad cut. I kind of want to reach in there and grab it, but I know that it's going to be extremely hot at this moment. But, as we can see here, this was a piece of solid aluminum about 15 minutes ago, and now it is cut. That's not too bad. I wouldn't grab a, a really good uh, hold of it at this point, but as you can see, pretty cleanly cut. Now it'll have a little bit of a rough edge on it, especially on the bottom side. I'll take a, either a deburr to it, or I'll take a file or something. But uh, not too shabby, really. Now this isn't traditionally what these machines are used for because like I said earlier these are not uh, really designed to be cutting metal as much as they're designed to um, engrave into metal but as pretty much any process if you can run it long enough it will take and cut through that. This is kind of the limit of what this machine will do. You might be able to get it a little bit thicker than this but for the kind of stuff I work with this is plenty. Now this other piece back here picking it up to see you can see some of the slag and 
these are the little pieces that came out of these two slots here but this piece here is stainless steel and I kind of play around with this initially and uh, right now it's just a piece of sacrificial um, bottom plate you can see that it burned into the stainless underneath the main cut um, and I'd rather it do that into this piece of metal than into this actual um, vise that I have here this vise is basically designed to hold the metal above the air but there's a little screw in here and that I don't want that getting burned and messing it all up but at any rate that's uh, pretty cool and you'd have a hard time machining some of these things now another downside of doing it with this type of laser is up inside this machine here there's a what they call a galvo and it's two mirrors that articulate to steer the laser so the laser comes out of the base down here through this tube this is a fiber optic tube that's in here along with some other wires and it goes into this here and you can see the lens there for the laser and um, so there's a center point where the beam is totally perpendicular with the metal that you have here but in this case because you're steering this laser out to the sides to reach the whole area um, depending on the lens you have and how far above the surface you are because that you have to bring it into focus what that means is that even this part which I had set up to be the center of the part be that center zero angle as it has to move the laser out to the edges it creates an angle on this piece and it's not too bad sorry I'm out of focus there it's not too bad on a, on a thin piece of, of two millimeter material um, but as you go further out from the center of where that zero angle would be you create a steeper and steeper angle here so I think this lens is good for about six inches six square inches if you're out at the extreme of that six inches which would be three inches away from dead center you're going to have up to like a 13 or 15 degree angle in your cut and for some things that would be critical um, but for what I do this is not that doesn't really matter um, where with a uh, typical laser cutter the laser beam is moving around with where you are cutting so it's always perpendicular so you get more of a straight edge anyway this is my new gadget